We're on another Birmingham Anglers Association water today and this is Coppice Lake. I'm going to take you through some tips relating to lake fishing in cold conditions like this and I'm going to keep it simple. We're going to fish a small ground bait feeder and we're also going to fish a waggler. So I'm going to give you five quick tips relating to feeder fishing on a venue like this. First one is the rod. I'm only fishing for small fish, small skimmers and roach today and I'm going to use a soft rod which is going to enable me to fish with finer hook lengths and smaller hooks. So as you can see I'm using the new Shakespeare Sigma wand and the massive advantage this rod has is the very very soft tips it's supplied with. So you've got three different tips of different actions and strengths. So the longest tip is very, very fine, moving down to a shorter stip, tip that's a bit stiffer, but all have the famous soft Sigma 1 tip that magnifies bites and will mean putting small fish in the net when you perhaps wouldn't see a bite with a stiffer tip. So that's a really important thing to think about when you're fishing a small feeder on a lake when the conditions are cold. The second tip is that I'm actually using a Nanofill mainline. Nanofill is extremely fine and a great benefit about it is that it doesn't stretch. So as I was saying, these shy biting fish on a cold day, Nanofill will magnify the bites and should enable me to catch more fish. You'll notice that this is the green version which has just come out of Nanofill and I'm using diameter 0.010 millimetre. So that just explains to you how fine it is. It means that I can cast very easily, very smoothly, and that stretch or lack of stretch will enable me to hit more bites. Combined with the Sigma wand, I've got the perfect outfit because the soft Sigma wand will cushion and absorb the lunges of fish while I'm playing them. On a venue such as Coppice Lake, when I'm targeting small silver fish like skimmers and roach, I don't think you can beat the classic paternoster rig. So I've set this rig up with a, a fairly short paternoster, they're around about 8 inches. I'm using it in conjunction with small cage feeders. I've got varying sizes and weights but I don't want to be feeding a lot of bait initially so that's why I've gone for a small cage feeder. I've got a hook length for around about 3 or 4 foot and in this case I've started with diameter 010 Berkeley XWR line and I'm starting with a size 20 Camasan B560 hook. So I'm starting off with things very fine, I want to just catch what I can to start with and take it from there. I would mention that as with all ledger in, feeder fishing, you want to vary the length of your hook length. I've started off with a fairly long hook length so I can fish the bait on the drop and just gauge what's happening in the swim. If I was missing bites, if the maggot was getting burst without me seeing a bite, I'd shorten the hook length down, maybe down to even a foot. If I wasn't getting any bites, I'd be tempted to fish the hook length even longer to present the bait in an even more natural way. The ground bait mix I'm using today is perfect for hard conditions when the water's gone colder like today. It's actually a mix of 50% census lake, black and 50% standard brown crumb. It's a lovely mix that you can mix up nice and fluffy and in this case I've kept it very dry and I'm adding pinkies casters into the ground bait every cast and filling the feeder up like that. So I can gauge what bait I'm actually putting in the feeder depending on the response from the fish. If I was catching a lot of fish or starting to catch some better fish, I might change up the size of the feeder and pack more casters into the ground bait. But starting off, I've just got perhaps five or six pinkies and five or six casters in that little package of ground bait. Another good tip to think about if you start catching skimmers is actually to use dampened micro pellets like these and actually fill those directly into the feeder. Sometimes that can 
provoke a response from a skimmer and it's a really deadly method, even when conditions are hard. Now I'm casting the feeder around about 20 metres out so I'm not fishing it too far out. My main thinking there is I'm hoping that I can bring the fish onto the waggler line and catch on the waggler later. A couple of quick things to mention. I always pick a marker on the far bank, in this case it's the second pallet over on the far bank and I'm fixing the length of line for the cast by utilising my line clip on the reel. So I'm just simply lobbing the feeder out The swim's around about six foot deep, so I'm just letting the feeder hit the bottom and I'm gradually tightening up to the tip. And the bites can come almost instantly, especially when the fish are taking on the drop. A deadly method when you're fishing for smaller fish like roach and skimmers is actually twitching the bait. So I missed that bite, but if I hadn't had a bite after maybe two minutes, I'd just simply move the feeder along the bottom and that can often provoke a bite. All the time I've been fishing the feeder I've been loose feeding maggots, perhaps 10 maggots are cast on a waggler line. So the view is to catch the fish on the waggler line so build up the swim with the swim feeder and then hopefully catch more fish on the waggler. The waggler is such an effective way of catching silverfish like this and uh, probably a more efficient way of doing it once the fish start feeding. So that's the kind of skimmers we're talking about. Not massive but great fun and also great weight builders on a hard day. So the tackle I'm using on the Waggler, I'm using the Agility 13 foot match rod, which is a lovely versatile rod for fishing the float. It's got a beautiful soft tip that blends nicely into the middle of the rod, which means that I can use it for light lines and small hooks, and when I'm catching smaller fish like these soft mouthed roach and skimmers. The line I'm using is Trilene Sensation Feeder. That's a bit ironic given that I'm float fishing but I love using a sinking line when I'm float fishing on lakes. It means that I can present the bait much better and I haven't got too much hassle sinking the line through the surface skim. So the waggler I've selected for today is a 5BB Peacock Waggler with an insert. And you'll notice that I use a quick change adapter so I can change the float very quickly depending on the conditions. It's always good to have a selection of different floats so you can adapt the float perfectly to the conditions you're faced with. So the shotting pattern I've used is a very simple typical waggler rig. I've got the majority of the shot grouped around the actual waggler float. So I've got two AA shot and some number eight shot and I've got five or six more shot down the line. In this case, I've bulked it together. So I've got four number eights, two number tens, and I've actually got two number 10 dropper shot below. So this is actually quite a positive rig when you're fishing a waggler. It means that you can read the bites really well. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you that now. So once I've got the waggler in position, you'll see that there's quite a lot of the insert showing. That's because those, that mini bulk of shot hasn't registered yet. Now as the float starts to settle, you can see that the bulk and dropper shot are registering on the float. And great, I had a bite then, even though I missed it, you could see that the float settled nicely and then I got a good positive bite. So you can see that the, the bulk is settling with the dropper shot and also the fact that the float's dotted down so it's very, very sensitive. There's only the slightest pimple of the float showing. That's really important to think about when you're float fishing all the time. As with the feeder, once the float's settled and the bait's on the bottom, I'll often just give the bait a little twitch and that can induce a bite. So 
So as you can see, I didn't leave the bait in long, perhaps maximum three, four minutes. Keep casting and working the swim. So I'm getting that natural fall of the bait through the water column down to the bottom. That's what's so effective about waggler fishing on a lake. In terms of feeding, I started off by feeding just 10 or 12 maggots every cast, really regular, probably every two minutes. And I've also started to introduce as the sessions progress some casters, hopefully to target a few better fish. And I've always got some fluoro pinkies with me as well just to try as a, a, a change bait. But I haven't actually fed any pinkies today apart from through the feeder. Typically in the winter when the fishing's hard, the best bait is just a single bait. So in that case, a single bronze maggot. I've got some red maggots to change as a change bait to try as well, and also caster. So as you can see, despite the tough conditions, that was a really hard frost this morning. We've had a fantastic day fishing here at Coppice Lake. I hope that some of the tips I've shared with you will help you in a similar situation when you're fishing on a local lake and check out all the new and available BAA venues that we've got. What an absolutely fantastic club.